um, can people in heaven look down and see us? This is a, one of the most um, hotly asked questions because people have uh, their loved ones who left them and uh, they want to know, are they looking upon us, especially if they were Christians? Now, some see uh, in Hebrews 12.1 that the idea that people in heaven might be able to look down and see us. And uh, they see this idea is somehow probable because uh, the Bible says in uh, Hebrews 12.1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with the, with so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which that so easily beset us, and let us run with patience this, uh, the race that is set before us. So a cloud of witnesses. Hmm. Therefore, let me, let me, let me, let, let's, let's just ask ourselves, is it really true? Now, the witnesses are the heroes of faith listed in um, Hebrews 11, 11. If you can go back there and check, these are the heroes of faith. And the fact that we are surrounded by them uh, leads some commentators to understand those heroes and possibly other people that they are looking down on us from heaven. You see, the idea that people are looking down from heaven to see what we are doing in uh, is common in popular culture. Uh, but as much as we might like the notion that uh, we are being watched by our departed loved ones, remember, our departed loved ones, um, we may be maybe taking the, 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 the argument so far, because that's not what Hebrews 12 verses 1 is teaching. Let's, let, let's check what Hebrews 12 1 is teaching here. Wherefore, seeing we, we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses. So it means there are some witnesses out in the clouds. What have they witnessed? <laughs> you see, you have to understand and ask yourself, what have they witnessed? Have they wit are they witnessing us? Or were they witnessing the truth of the you know of, of God? Are they witnessing the faith? Are they above us and setting an example for us? Or are they there watching us? You know, you, you, we have to understand and ask ourselves this. Now, building on Hebrews 11, which I'll not read, you can just go back there and read the whole chapter. The author begins drawing up some practical lessons. That's why chapter 12 begins with, Therefore, therefore, the witnesses are the people whom God commends for their faith in chapter 11. And there is a large crowd of them in heaven. The question is, in what way are they witnesses? That's, that's one thing you have to ask yourself. Yes, they're in heaven with Jesus there. What are they witnessing? You see, the proper interpretation of Hebrews 12.1 is that the men, okay, the men and women, forming the great cloud of witnesses, are witnesses to the value of living life by faith. These people, they live the life by faith. So they witnessed. They are witnesses out there. <laughs> are you getting the point? Their Old Testament stories uh, give testimony to the blessings of choosing faith over fear. Okay? These people, they chose faith over fear, and they lived a good life, and now they're in heaven, they are witnesses of that. So to paraphrase the, uh, the, the, the start of Hebrews 12, 1, which you've just read, since we have so many tried and true examples of proven faith, <laughs> you see, if I may paraphrase the same, it, I may say, since we have so many tried and true examples of pr proven faith, are you seeing that point? So it is not that, um, it basically is not, uh, is not that people are in heaven watching us. Uh, you know, as if our lives on earth are so interesting. You, you, you know, that, that's what people think, that oh, 
Our life is so interesting and they're there watching us and they're shouting and say, wow, wow, look at Keith, look at this person, look at... No, it's not that we have anything so interesting uh, <laughs> down here. Um, but those, but those have, those who have gone before us have already set a lasting example for us. And the record of their lives bears witness to faith and God and truth. So these people, they have already been there. They have done it. Yes, we may be mourning about them and say, oh, we want them to look upon, uh, uh, down on us. But they have already done the whole thing. And they are examples to us. Okay? I don't know if you understand this. You see, the Bible tells us, when I paraphrase the, uh, 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 the same, the same uh, Hebrews 12.1, it's basically telling us, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that is so easily entangling, okay? And let us run with perseverance the race that is marked for us. Because of the faith and endurance of believers who went before us, okay? You see, these people, they live by faith. And they set an example for us. And because of the faith and the endurance of the believers who went before us, we are inspired to stay the course in our own race of faith. We follow an example of those people, Abraham, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, etc. Those are a cloud of witnesses. They witnessed, they had the faith. You see, um, even before I come to this, let me, let, me, let me show you something here. You know, thinking about the story of the rich man and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, Lazarus, uh, Lazarus and the rich man, we can see the rich man, and uh, some people point to the rich man's mention of his brothers in Luke 16.28 as a proof that departed souls, that is in, who are in Hades, at least, can see the events on earth. However, the passage never says that the rich man could see his brothers. He knew he had brothers and he knew they were unbelievers. Let, let, let me show you Luke 16.28. Luke 16.28. See. 16.28. For I have five brethren. This is the rich man saying to Abraham that he may testify unto them. Least they also come to this place of torment. Now, this one does not show in any way that the rich man could be able to see his brothers. Abraham said unto them, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear, uh, let, let them, hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went out from, uh, uh, to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they... They hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. You see, there's, no, there's nothing explaining concerning if the rich man could see his brothers. That's, that's one thing. Also, some people use uh, a text in Revelation 6.10 to 11 as a proof text that the tribulation martyrs call for God to avenge their deaths. You know, these people, they are calling God, please avenge our deaths. Let me read for you. Uh, this is in Revelation 6.10. Revelation 6.10. It's good to check this and to be able to understand, are, are these people really watching us? And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood? On them that dwell on the earth. Did, were they seeing them? <laughs> I don't think so. And the, and the white robes were given unto them, unto every one of them. And it uh, was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Okay? So these people, they are given white robes. And they are saying, please God, avenge our, uh, you know, our death. 
Again, this passage says nothing about the matter as seeing people on earth, like I've just told you. It simply says that they knew they deserved justice and desired the Lord to take action. So the Bible doesn't specifically say that people in heaven cannot look down on us. There's, there's no that uh, point that they cannot look down uh, on us. But there's a point, <laughs> there's a point that, uh, remember what the Bible says here. Have you ever seen this? Uh, this uh, uh, let me show you. I don't know which. Uh, mm, let me just use this because I'm 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 kind of trying to remember this verse. Let me just use the New King James because uh, it's a, it's the one which has opened up here. I just want to show you this. You see, in Ecclesiastes nine five, it says, "For the living know that they will die, but the dead know." nothing and they have no more reward for the memory of them is forgotten so forget about this one which is down here they know nothing they know nothing yes i know we are alive in christ but uh, this is also to prove that uh, people who are already gone they have already run their race they have run their race they have finished their race now they are out there rejoicing with god that can be one uh, <laughs> can be one understanding of this point that if these people are they looking <laughs> down on us or not that can be one understanding but still however it is a uh, people in heaven are likely also remember preoccupied with other things such as uh, worshiping god and enjoying the glories of heaven this th think about it these people are worshiping god they're enjoying the glories of heaven they are they are having a good time do you think they have a time to sit down and keep on watching on us whether or not people in heaven can look down and see us we are not running our race for them okay remember you're running your own race we are not hoping for their approval or listening for their applause no as hebrews 12 uh, verse 2 says keep your focus where it belongs okay keep your focus where it belongs Let's go back and let me let me show you Hebrews uh, 12 verses 2. The Bible tells us very clearly, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our, of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising shame, and he sat down at the right hand uh, uh, of the throne of God. So where should our focus be? Looking unto jesus that's that's where our focus should be we should fix our eyes on jesus who is the pioneer the perfecter of our faith the author and the finish of our faith because of what because he is the is our blessed hope so the moment we finish this he's going to give us a crown so our crown is not from the people who we think they're looking on us Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ. So when we are focusing, we are running our race. We are running our race. We are so many in the race. Okay? Everybody is on the race. But you are yourself running alone. And you are keeping your eye on your price. So don't worry about uh, are there people looking and, uh, uh, at me. The, those clouds of witnesses for me what i believe in about this is that those witnesses they already they already set a standard for us they already witnessed by their faith so we are being told to run our race because we already have others who ran the race and they won their race so they are there as witnesses that we can be able to run our race also and be able to make it have, have you have you seen the point and uh, if you don't know how you're going to start your race, there's only one way that you can start your race. That is through the gospel. Even if you say you're running your race and you don't, you're not a believer, then there's nothing you're doing. You're just wasting your time. Just the same way you see uh, people who are bound by law and by religion. And they think that I'm doing good for God. I'm, I'm giving to the poor. I'm giving this. Come on, you're doing nothing. Absolutely, there are no rewards in heaven. Because you're, even if you give to the poor, you're going straight to hell. So, the starting point, you know, every race has a starting point. 
your starting point is knowing the truth, the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. First, it talks about how Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. For you, Jesus replaced himself. You are supposed to be on that cross because you are the sinner. But Jesus took that part. He became a propitiation. Now, if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried and rose again as is written in the scriptures, my friends, you are saved. All you need to do is just confess. Confess to God what you believe. Tell him, Jesus, I believe that you died, you were buried, and you rose again. For me, as is written in the scriptures, I believe you, I trust you, and now, today, make me a new creature. And then, I start running my race. Okay? So, those witnesses are there for us to tell us that it is possible for you to go to heaven and worship God. It is possible. They have already witnessed this. And the Bible tells us about these people. They are up in heaven. So don't be like uh, thinking and asking yourself uh, uh, what's going to happen. Don't wait for you know those people to help you like the, the rich man is trying to help people who are here on earth. No, they are not helping in anything. Run and finish your own race your own way. Okay, there are already witnesses out in heaven who are already speaking. And if you're a faithful servant, you're going to get your reward in heaven. When you get, you finish your race, there'll be a reward for you. Okay, because God is the righteous judge and he judges them who live by faith. Okay, he's, he's faithful and true. And one day, he will hug you and he will stand with you and he will tell you, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you have uh, been, uh, been uh, uh, blessed by this. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and also you can uh, share the video to others so that they can be able to understand and know the truth of the gospel. And as well, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can watch new and more videos which we post every day. God bless you and have a blessed time.